so good evening everyone so we'll see quickly so we'll see the international organizations we in institute we call it as international organizations but i can tell you that's for practical reasons but i can tell you the questions are uh, comprehensively coming from the whole international affairs international relations and international institutions okay but practical reasons we mention the name organizations but don't restrict yourself we are not going to restrict ourselves to the organizations alone so including the e ones we are going to see so we are going to take up uh, <clears throat> some current affair questions practical possible current affairs questions and we are going to see answers for them before we see them um uh, what i wanted to tell you is that suppose uh, uh i don't know how many of you guys you sitting here and those who are sitting in online also have uh, have attended the pre streaming orientations for international organizations that i have given any one of you sitting in this classroom have attended that the orientation that i have given no okay then so those who are sitting in online those who have already attended the orientation which for pre streaming that i gave Uh, the first ten minutes of this session is going to be a repetition from that session. Okay, for the new listeners, that's okay. It's going to be a very important information. Okay, if you look at the previous year international relations questions, how many questions has come up from the international relations as a whole uh, in the past seven years? If you see, it means I have taken only from two thousand sixteen to twenty twenty two. so that the most recent aspect of the international relations we can get a pulse of it if we go little backward 2015 14 means it will be little older so the the ir region is highly dynamic the questions trends also change as a lot that is why i fixed the last 6 7 years okay for analysis i went through all the 7 years previous year questions of international relations in the prelims starting from 2016 to 2022 if you see the number of questions that has come up is 13 questions in 2022 imagine how out of 100 questions 13 questions from international relations seven in 2021 there is a huge fluctuation yeah and then there were there was uh, five questions in 26 in 6 18 seven in 8 in 17 and 15 questions in 2016 so this is a huge numbers these numbers are which means it will determine your success okay of the entire prelim so this is a subject that you cannot skip and this is a subject where you can make all the questions right also with smart preparation and any question that comes up every single question will be answerable questions only doesn't require that much big conceptual understanding most of the questions are factual questions only test your memory you do the reading proper reading from the proper material from the proper areas and then do the proper revision any question you can answer and this is a subject that can uh determine your success in your prelims also that's the thing you have to keep it in your mind every question are answerable okay next important point what i have put up in this bracket is nothing but questions from international related international affairs international events international organizations related to environment okay since environment is a separate subject where you will be reading for example you and um uh, any climate change related events you and related or any biodiversity related anything related to that international relations current affair i have skipped them here okay since you will be reading them for your environment subject i have consciously avoided environment related questions but if environment related international relations international organizations also taken into account means actually it is 15 questions for 2022 two questions from environment three questions from environment zero questions and one question three question four question 12 questions from environment look at this year this is a very strange year international environment related matters alone 12 questions has come from here and then 15 questions from non environment related international affairs so this is the weightage of the subject in your prelims okay after going through every single question 7 years less 60 questions which means approximately 8 to 9 questions per year eight questions for sure in a year definitely you will get for international relations we can make a possible statistical assumption average we can do it and where the questions are coming up after seeing all the 60 questions of the past 7 years i was able to recognize 
that every single question could be put into any of the 10 baskets. There are only 10 baskets, 10 broad topics. Every single international relations question will fit into any of the 10 baskets. There is no 11th basket. I mean, I cannot put any other basket. In fact, the 10th basket itself is miscellaneous. That's a very small number of questions has come miscellaneous, which I cannot put into any of the former nine categories. So I have put broadly into 10 categories. And looking at the questions from each of this one one basket, I prioritize them also into three broad priorities. Priority areas one, priority areas two, and priority areas three. So in three, I've put up four topics. And then in priority areas two, I've put up two topics. And then in priority areas one, I've put up five topics. So if you see the international organizations, prelims, questions, num the questions, this area tops, this one and the next one tops. So the questions coming from regional, multilateral, and global groupings, which may be a formal grouping or which may be an informal grouping. Formal grouping now, or organization or secretariat, leadership, annual summit, something like that. Informal grouping means there is no formal structure, but the members meet with an agenda, something like that. So either formal or informal, either regional or multilateral or global, whatever it is, such groupings questions are coming up and this area tops in prelims. So much of questions comes up from this area. So what are all the nature of the questions that comes up? Look at this one. Though I have put the word etc. here, uh, you can give less attention to the etc. The remaining words you can pay more attention to member countries questions are asking questions upsc questions if you look into or regional grouping they'll give which of the following is not a member whether india is a member india is a member the statement is correct or wrong so this kind of membership of the forums is always becoming a favorite area for upsc and then agreements if suppose any agreements they have made in the recent past these countries comes together signs an agreement uh, or does a dialogue uh, or do a conference uh, go for a meeting they sign a treaty they bring a new program or they make any significant measures, et cetera. Everything is becoming questions. But what I've done is that I have et cetera. This is the et cetera that I wanted to tell you. But here I have excluded UN related because UN is a separate basket we can keep that into. So I excluded UN. So except United Nations related, these groupings is becoming a very important area. 11 questions has come up in the seven years between 2016 and 17. And if you want to know, uh, I can tell you every year, minimum one question coming from this area, which is exception is 2020 and 2017. No single question came in these two years. But however, every single year, one question is coming up. And uh, 2022, three questions came from this area last year. Okay, so but anyway, I can tell you this is a very important area, 11 questions, and this is the top priority area in international relations. So what we are going to do is that in the last one year, uh, what are all the questions? And one more information I have to tell you. I went through all the 60 questions of the past seven years. And if you go through, you will come to recognize that 90% of the questions are coming from current, in current affairs related international events only. If they are not asking from any kind of static area, something like that. I can tell you about if so 10 questions has come up means nine questions are having a clear, strong, perfect, precise current affair rational for it current affair in the last one year, starting from the previous June to this coming May. So up to this period in the span of one year, 90% of the questions are coming. Remaining that 1% of the questions, it was very strange for me to identify a reason. But even then, I can tell you, um, they have some sort of uh, some sort of distant current affair relation, though it is not directly connected to. So what I can tell you is that last one year, the nine topics, the 10 topics related current events are, in the same priority, if you have read now, you can answer. That's the idea. What we are going to do is that in this uh, 10 topics, <clears throat> we are going to see some three, four sample questions, current affair questions, okay? Possible questions, and uh, we'll do the session in that way. So this is area number one. And area number two, international and regional trade and finance related matters. So here I have skipped except finance related matters and except UN related matters, excluding them. The remaining I have mentioned here. And if you go for a trade related matters, that is another priority area. Nine questions has come up in the seven years and trade or regional trade finance related matters. What are the questions coming up? If you see, it means uh, there I have included WTO, IMF, World Bank uh, or economic related trade related everything coming up under this area and they are asking questions about the organizations their structure 
their functions related and the agreements anything they have made in the recent past any treaties they have concluded in the past the programs initiated by them other initiatives done by them all these areas these are the precise areas once again i have put up etc but don't uh, bother about this etc the remaining words are very crucial questions has come up from this small small areas okay focusing this area so nine questions in the past seven year and if you want to know the trend i can tell you uh so one question each year except 2021 and 20 2018 except these two years where no questions came one question coming up every year 2016 four questions came and 2017 two questions came so you can understand this is also fluctuating area but minimum one question in a year you can in, you can get in this and then key terms you would have heard and then they'll they'll tell the term and say that this term is recently in news it is related to what one two three four they'll give an option that's such kind of questions once again this is also a priority area nine questions has come up in the past seven years international organizations events etc and then united nations organs specialized agencies programs funds etc and once again these questions are not from the static area don't go and read the un all the agencies everything not needed current affair related last one year la current affair la what are all the united nations related things are in news only from them questions come and seven questions in the past seven years <clears throat> and almost every every year single year one question except 2020 and 2017 every remaining years in the past six years except two all the four years questions has come some years even two questions three questions coming up like that it has come up like that so these are the first priority areas last one year la from this five broad baskets whatever has happened in the one year ias parliament la you are referring to prepare them i can tell you that minimum if suppose 10 question let's assume eight questions are coming up i can tell you four to five questions from this five baskets alone you can answer okay we'll see the sample questions also and then going for the second priority topic looking at the previous year trend major event area country ethnic group anything Uh, so ab region is in news right or uh, <clears throat> the earthquake in turkey or flood in uh, uh, pakistan um, that is uh, that's everybody knows it or uh, the southeast fiji la or uh, volcano has erupted under water a volcano so these regions in news events in news ethnic groups in news such areas any ethnic group any country so this area is also seems to be a prominent area those seven questions in the past seven years i can tell you one thing um four questions came in 2022 one year four questions came in 2022 in this year but still i have put up in second priority areas not in first priority because uh, uh question came in 2018 16 and 2022 only three years la question has come from this topic remaining years la no four years no questions three years la seven questions 2022 la four questions so you can understand this is a highly fluctuating area because in 2022 they asked four questions from this one single topic alone so maybe this is a trend of upsc maybe not this is a random odd year or this is a trend beginning of a trend coming year also they may ask so this is a doubtful thing only and then but still i have put up in second priority only yeah next one is reports indexes including various reports and the reports of various indexes if anything is there what is india's ranking and how the indexes are calculated these questions are also a favorite area of upsc and this seven question has come up seven. but here i can tell you about this particular area uh, because last to 3 years no single question has come from this this reports indexes and all those but before that last 3 years which means uh, up to 2000 2021 22 no question has come but if you see from 2016 to 2019 every single year one question minimum came from this area okay and even um, i can tell you 2019 la two questions and 2016 three questions came from reports indexes alone but this is a very dry area you know because it's huge number of reports published by different bodies and indexes indexes la ranking and where india stands how this index is calculated okay the sub elements of the indexes all these things are becoming questions means it's a high factual area okay we get often we get this kind of confusion also this area but still uh, but last 3 years no question has come so i had a choice whether to keep it as a priority area or a least priority area so i was in a doubt so better i kept it as a second priority areas left kept it 
And then if you go for the third priority areas, the nuclear related, military related, security related, collective security related items in the news. Now security related events are happening a lot. Azerbaijan, Armenia is fighting, Israel is fighting with Syria, and then Russia is fighting with Ukraine. So world over conflicts are going on. NATO is in news, CSTO is in news, and then Warsaw Pact is also, though it is defunct, it is also being discussed as security related events. A lot is happening world over. And uh, that area is also another area, but it is, a, as I said, it's a third priority, least priority area. I have kept it. But this year, this may be more uh, comes up. And then bilateral and global trade by India. India's trade with a country, with the European Union, what is India's trade? But though it is a very rare area, that's also one of the area questions has come up. But only three questions in the past seven years, that's a strange area, I can tell you. Um, so 2021 question, 2017, two questions. Only two years questions has come from this area. 2017, la two, 2020, la one. Remaining areas, remaining years, la no single question has come. So this is important, not important, we cannot say. But this is one area where questions has come up in international relations. And then sports. Strangely, I can tell you 10 years before, very regularly, every single year, UPSC will ask questions from sports, almost 12, 13 years back. Every year they ask questions, but they have skipped the trend. There is no more, no sports question at all coming up and nobody was reading to. But strangely, one year, 2020, la, so I've said three questions in uh, past seven years. But to be precise, I can tell you three questions came only in one year, 2021, la, in only one year, in the past seven years. I can even tell you go for past 10 years. Only one year sports related question has come. That is unusual. So three questions in one year. Yeah, determining. I'm, it is very interesting because uh, 2021, the three questions, for instance, they said Lara's Wall Sports Award. They mentioned that award. Who received that award and what is the nature of that award? Something like that statements came. And then 32nd some, Summer Olympics was conducted before that exam. So on the Summer Olympics, look, who won? What was the performance? Something like that. Who, what, what, what medal they got? Something like that. And then ICC World Test Championship. Look, one question has come. So cricket lovers would have find it an interesting question. Anyway, so, so this is a highly fluctuating area once again. And remaining, I've kept it under miscellaneous. Four questions are in the span of six years, seven years, la, four questions I cannot put up in any of the above nine baskets. Okay, that completely strange, odd questions that stood out. For example, question one year, 2022. And I have to tell you one thing. On the four miscellaneous questions came only in 2022. Okay, you know how the question was? Uh, Vietnam's economic growth, Vietnam's political system, and Vietnam, why it is growing fastly. The statements were given related to that. Vietnam country related to that. And then right to city. By some United Nations efforts of right to city. About that one question came. And then Global Ocean Commission, it is related to seabed exploration by India. Something related to that one question came. And there is one water credit, no one international event related one thing came. These four questions I cannot fix into any of the above nine. Okay, But all these four, I can put it as least priority area. So this is how question has come. We are going to take up each one single area. And even if you are preparing, I would suggest you first to finish up the first priority areas. All the one year current affairs like we have already done means revision process, I'm saying, because already would have studied international relations, a lot of international relations in the recent period. If you have already done it means regarding the revision, regarding the areas incomplete and all those things, go for first priority first, finish them, and then go for second priority, finish them, and then you can come for the third priority. First and second priority, do a lot of revisions, as much revisions as possible. So this is the thing which I said it in orientation. I've repeated again here. Now let's get into the purpose of the present session. Okay. So let's take up each of this area. And we'll see current affairs related questions that I have framed based on UPC standards. I framed some questions and we'll go through them. So regional, multilateral and global groupings, both formal and informal, these are all the areas where I'm excluding two things. One is UN and its agencies plus trade related, trade and finance related. So except these two areas, UN and this two, the remaining all regional, multilateral, whatever in news, I went through them and I've handpicked some three to four questions. Okay. 
Okay. So let's go through the questions. So the questions which has been already asked from these areas in the pre-strumming, I've skipped them. Okay. Though one or two questions, overlapping questions came, which is not covered in pre-strumming, but still which is relevant for this UPSC coming prelims. I have chosen some three, four questions. Okay. Read this first question. Consider the following statements and try to find an answer. I think you guys can answer also. Huh? Okay. Consider the following statements in connection with the Indian Ocean region in the recent news. Under the China India Ocean Indian Ocean Region Forum meeting held recently, which was held in December 2022. Okay. China proposes to establish a marine disaster prevention and mitigation cooperation mechanism between China and countries in the Indian Ocean region. Is the statement true? The Indian Ocean Rim Association with its 23 members from the region has disaster reduction as one of the six priority areas. Is it true? Both the statements are true, actually. Because in December 2022, China called up and nearly as many as 19 different countries from the region uh, went and participated in this meeting. And this is very sensitive because India reacted with a lot of con India reacted with concerns regarding that because China said that we are meeting all of these member countries. Our purpose is to re respond quickly to the disaster management. If you look at it, means recent period, the Indian Ocean region, or the areas closer to the proximate to the Indian Ocean region, any disaster, natural disaster happens, which is the first country to respond quickly. Now, India is one of the first country. Indian Navy is very quickly responding. So that is a legacy that we have established. And China wants to kind of, uh, they want to break this kind of uh, the India's ability. So recent period, China said that disasters and all happens, we need to respond to it quickly. So the more number of member countries from the Indian Ocean region, they are able to establish a good relationship. Then future, disaster or Navy, we are plus planting there in Maldives or here, like that they can say and they can place the navies and all. They have said it actually 19 countries participated. And this is of strategically more important event for India. So this is Indian Ocean Rim Association has six priority areas. In the six priority areas, the disaster redu risk reduction is one of the area. Okay. So there are six areas there. And I suggest you uh, to go through all the six priority areas of the Indian Ocean region. And Indian Ocean region, uh, sorry, Indian Ocean Rim Association is also very important this year for this one reason. Anyway, so next... Uh, I'll go for the next question. Anyway, quick, those who have answered both one and two, are absolutely right. The others, so answer both one and two. Let's go for the question number two. Uh, which of the following statements regarding the Raisinia dialogue is not correct? It was in current affair once again. It is India's premier conference on geopolitics and geoeconomics. The dialogue is conducted annually at New Delhi, India. It's a meeting between public heads of private sector, media and academia. It's an initiative of India under its G20 leadership. Which of the above statements is correct and which is which is not correct? The one statement that is wrong. D is wrong. Why D is not correct? It's not related to, but who actually conducts this Raisinia dialogue and who initiates? It's Ministry of External Affairs with Observer Research Foundation, ORF and Ministry of External Affairs of India, of Government of India. They together are conducting this one. And this is a multi-sectoral, multi-stakeholders comes up, let's look at it, government heads of the states comes up, politicians, top politicians, top ministers comes up for the meeting, uh, private sector comes up, Academicia comes up, media comes up. It's, it's a multi-stakeholder meeting and they are doing this uh, talks, raising near dialogue. So most of you has made it right. And the questions have made it in a or, or kind of fluctuated standard, which means uh, some difficult questions will be there and some easy questions will be there. I've tried to stick to the UPSC's pattern. Anyway, so this question easily most of you answered. Okay, we'll go for the, anyway, go through this raising dialogue that was in news. And it is conducted annually also. So every year it is in news. And then next, which of the following statement is not correct? 
with respect to the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. That was also SCO is a very, very important organization, particularly post this Taliban taking over Afghanistan and for a variety of reasons. Uh, SEO is a very important organization. It is news. Actually, it is in news. It is the world's largest regional organization in terms of population. Is it true? Is it true? I mean, who are all the member countries of this SEO? India, China. How many countries? Eight countries are there. And India, China is there. And then Russia is there. If you Pakistan is there. If you calculate them itself, won't you get the 40% of the world's population? Don't you get it? Yeah, you get it, no? So that's true, actually, the statement. You can even make an assumption. So why you struggle for this to arrive at this option? So answer A, <clears throat> A is correct, actually. Consists of the 40% of the world's population. And it is also, if you look at it, geospatial extent also, the geographical extent also, if you look at it, this grouping forms the world's largest ones. Okay? China, Russia, India. So larger part of Eurasia or the larger part comes in. It focuses on economic and political cooperation among the member countries. Is it true? Yes, it focuses on political matters, security related matters, economy related, all the matters. It's it's actually a comprehensive organization which looks into politics as well as economic, both the things. Second statement is also correct. Uh, which one is wrong? It is governed by the heads of the state council. It's supreme decision making body, which meets once a year. <laughs> Is it true? SEO heads of the state meets once in a year. SEO. Yes. Come on, everybody. Online. That's true. India and Bela Iran and Belarus are the pairs of countries that are trying for observer status in the SEO presently. Is it true? Yes or no? That's wrong, actually. This is the statement that's wrong because already they both are member observers. They are asking for full membership presently, and most possibly they'll get the membership very soon. Uh, these two countries, but already there are four observers, eight member countries, and four observer states are there. Observer is Afghanistan is there, and then we have Iran as observer, and then uh, Belarus as member. This Belarus has supported Russia's invasion of Ukraine. That's the one country which has openly supported. So. Russia is in the process of backing Belarus and Iran and Belarus will get the membership. And then one more country, I think it's Mongolia. It should be. Yeah, already observers. The one more country is Mongolia. So these are the countries. The fourth statement is wrong. Yeah. So this is a time for to test you also. Yeah. You are prepared in your current affairs and all those things. You are your preparation, you can test yours status of preparation also. We'll go for the next question very quickly. I'll go for the next question. Okay. So second area, international and regional trade, finance related organizations, agreements, treaties, those things that has come up in the past. I framed some three, four questions. Let's see whether it's answerable for you or not. Yeah. Which of the following is not an outcome of the 12th ministerial conference of WTO held recently? Very recently, after because of this COVID, some of the conferences, global institutions, sort of conferences and all, uh, were not conducted. So some of them they went for virtual summit. Some of the conferences, true global summits alone, they did not go for at all. Now, well, post COVID in the 2022, so many conferences have happened. For instance, ministerial conference, 12th ministerial conference happened after a gap of five years. Look at it. Five years before prelims writing, guys only were preparing the previous 11th ministerial conference would outcome. So you are the guys going after our five years with the ministerial conference of WTO would outcome has already happened. So I suggest you definitely and UNFCC also 27th conference of parties has happened, which is uh, almost after a gap of nine years, it has happened. Okay, so you are the guys going for prelims after a gap of nine years, preparing COP would outcomes. So the WTO also the outcome, I would suggest you because this question is very limited because I have Keep on, I have kept just four options here. That to one option is wrong option. So proper three outcomes of WTO's fifth, twelfth conference only. I have kept it here. But I would suggest you definitely you you would have read by this time WTO the twelfth conference outcomes. If not, go through all the outcomes of this. As I said, it's happening in a gap of five years. Members committed to work towards having a well-functioning dispute settlement systems accessible to all the members by 2024. Is it true? 
is it an outcome in fact that's the first outcome or before 2024 the dispute settlement mechanisms or well functioning settlement system which is accessible to all the members and rather it's one of the major outcome it's a direct outcome it's just a cut and paste statement agreement on curtailing harmful fishing subsidies was made is it true that is true related to lot of fishing related harmful fishing subsidies the agreement was made in this also agreement on global food security under which the members agreed to a binding decision to exempt food purchased by the un's world food program for humanitarian purposes from any export restrictions is it true particularly because of this russia ukraine war <clears throat> there is a shortage of this supply this humanitarian emergencies and all happening so the countries have come to this agreement this is an one important outcome related to the current happening so global uh, members agreed to a binding decision to exempt uh, they made a binding decision that's the most important uh, it's considered as a bigger one of the achievement of this ministerial conference binding decision to exempt food purchased by the un's food program from any export restriction so countries cannot keep india or any country cannot keep any restrictions on the food products wheat rice and all those matters right? which is procured by united nations of the world food program other buyers you can put the restrictions but not for the wfp and then members agree to permanently waive intellectual property patents on covid 19 vaccines without the consent of the patent holder this is the wrong statement since all the first three are right now this is the wrong statement what is the problem with the statement it's not permanently it is only for temporarily for 5 years so for 5 year period covid vaccines la intellectual property rights la no waiver will be there only for 5 years after 5 years the patent holder will get his intellectual rights back so this is only a temporary measure not a permanent measure anyway so that's that is what making this statement wrong okay <clears throat> yeah d is false c is true that's right d is correct iran as a member country of su uh, iran no 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 Iran is not a member. They've asked for membership. Okay, the process was started because uh, the same issue happened with another student also. They have started the process, but have they become full-fledged members? Member yet? Yeah, I'll confirm it before this class. Okay. Iran is said to be. yeah they started the process and the process is going on okay it should have been this year right india's chairman so india's presidentship la i'll just confirm it in few minutes we'll for the question number 2 which of the following statements regarding the indo pacific economic framework for prosperity is not correct which is not correct so all the four statements are here very quickly come on guys answer it was launched jointly by the us and other partner countries of the indo pacific region in may 2022 in tokyo japan is it true come on it aims to strengthen economic partnership among economic partnership related forum india is a member and this grouping together constitutes 40% of the global gdp indo pacific economic the framework strictly adheres to the principles related to trade and supply chain resilience alone the statement is wrong actually they have four pillars the remaining all three are correct in the forum is essentially is resting on four pillars in the four pillars la trade is one pillar supply chain resilience is second pillar and then uh, 
taxes and uh, anti corruption is fourth measure is one pillar and then they have one more pillar um uh, any one of you i miss that one more pillar anyone some of it is related to environment it's related to environment clean energy right right clean energy decarbonization i'm very sorry <laughs> clean energy and decarbonization yeah thank you so these are the four areas three and four areas not just alone it's not that this is one of the area and these two areas it's it's in a very important significant grouping india is a member to this grouping anyway most of you has made it right yeah clean clean energy clean energy not economy most of you made it right that's good we'll go for the next uh. so third area key terms the terms which was in news let's check which of the following is correct regarding the black sea grain initiative seen in the news recently i think most of you can answer very quickly it's an agreement between russia and ukraine made with the turkey and the un during the 2022 russian invasion of ukraine is it true is it true that's true to keep this black sea la there is a number of ports are there and the black sea ports la the grain movement russia or ukraine will not hinder their war will not stop the supply so it's an assured supply which will go along the grains will be supplied along the black sea without any interruption though russia ukraine going for a war that's the assurance that was made but very recently it was agreement in 2022 but very recently in the last 2 3 months la russia said that it is going to back out from the initiative okay russia is not going to be part of this thing until they've said it so that's a threat that has come up that's why it is in news an attempt by russia to recover its warship moskva which was sinked by ukraine forces in the black sea that's wrong actually this moskva ship of russia was was hit and it was submerged that statement is true but on the statement today in name is not black sea initiative in fact there is no name for it it was an event that has happened you can be familiar with that event also it's russia's second option russia's initiative to increase its crude oil export from the black sea port in fact they have increased lot of crude oil export via black sea port that have done it but it's not this name multilateral military exercise hosted by usa that's wrong the imaginary statement that have created anyway statement to see that is black sea grain initiative that term was in news most of you has made it right good Iran was accepted as a permanent member yeah under India's leadership uh, SEO in meeting held in Samarkand Uzbekistan I'll confirm it I'll confirm it in this class in PIB they have mentioned as clean economy I've read it as a clean energy in some authentic source only direct website I think anyway the term pink tide that was in news recently is related to I have kept three options here fourth one in the last okay quickly go through all the four and then answer the pink tide that was in news recently is related it's one type of harmful harmful algal bloom around florida's gulf coast is it true first statement is it true actually that is uh, actually this is red tide not just in florida's gulf coast recently they have taken a sample from there uh, coast la red sea arc i mean the sea water is like red because of this harmful algae the world over various places sort of phenomena but samples recently taken there that is why it was in news it is a tide seen at the mumbai beaches reported in the news recently not recently 2022 la 2020 la there was a news mumbai la but that is related to blue algae i mean blue tide it was called as blue tide 
I mean, she looked perfect, deep blue. Yeah, you can see that because some uh, some space activities, moon is coming there, here, a lot of changes, some reflection. She looked so blue. They called it as blue tide. So good images and all there. But it is not. It's blue tide. It's not related to pink tide. Increase in women participation in agriculture in the recent past world over, as stated by FAO's report on the status of women in the agri-food systems. This report is published by FAO only. But is this statement true? C, D also you go through before making any decision. It's a political wave and perception of a turn towards left-wing governments in Latin American democracies moving away from the neoliberal economic model in the 21st century. Come on, then finally you guys struck between C and D. Tell me quickly which is the option. C or D. C, D. Since it is pink and girls are there, no? Yeah. C, you are going. C is wrong, yeah. D. Okay. <laughs> Tied. So it's D actually. Uh, okay, you see Latin America, so many countries, so many countries are moving towards left wing. In fact, I can tell you this is one of the world over uh, the, the top 10 events that have shaped the world. If you see it in the past one year, 2022, this is one of the significant event. Most of the Latin American countries are moving towards left wing. Leftist countries, leftist uh, political parties are coming to power. So liberalism, the world is moving towards liberalism. But strangely, Latin American countries are shifting towards left wing. Left wing parties are coming to power. In the surge in left wing parties coming to the power, they are giving a name pink tide. Okay. The term is very popular. Yeah. That's one of the significant event of. Uh, yeah. 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 No, the, the term is very much in news. Anyway, so answer is D. And I thought that you guys will confuse if pink is related with women. Somehow I felt. That's right. And then, but don't get confused. UPSC also does that. Okay. Let's go for the third question. I think most of you guys can answer also. This is one of the world's humanity or the first event kind of that. Anyway, I'm not giving any clue. Dark mission seen in the news recently is related to which of the following? Mission by NASA under which Sunita Williams held the records for most fake works by a woman. She kept a record or not? I mean, she is the woman who did the most number of space walks. That is true. She did that record. And the first statement is true, but on the mission, the name is not Dark Mission. In fact, there is no name for that mission. It's a space mission by NASA aimed at testing a method of planetary defense against near Earth objects. That is true. That was a big achievement. Okay. And um, an asteroid is coming and um, they hit it successfully, they hit it. An asteroid that is approaching the earth, they hit it and they blast it. Just a dark mission, Google it now. Google as a surprise for you that I can tell you. When you get in your free time, you can do it, not now. Yeah. Just type dark mission, Google will give you a, a cute surprise they'll give you. And then C, mission by USA government to facilitate establishment of car companies of the 21st century by driving the world's transition to electric vehicles. That's wrong. That's wrong. None of the above. Yeah, you know that. It's not actually Tesla's planning. Uh, he has made a plan, but anyway, this, 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 you don't bother about it. B is right. I, I felt most of you can go right for this question. Area for United Nations. Questions related to the UN, we'll see very quickly. Consider the following statements about the UN Statistical Commission. It was in news very recently, why? It's the highest body world over. It is one of the. It is one of the. It is the highest body world over related to setting up statistical standards and all those things. It's UN order body. It is very important body. Not that important, but still, uh, it is assuming importance for UPSC this year. Why? Because India is elected as the chairperson uh, to this uh, UN Statistical Commission very recently. In the last three four months, very recently, India has been elected. Anyway, so let's see the statements. It is responsible for setting up statistical standards and the development of concepts and methods, including their implementation at the national and international levels. Come on, yes or no? Come on, first statement is correct or wrong? I've given, yeah, only two statements. 
वन एंड टू बोथ बोथ आर करेक्ट फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट द कमीशन कंसिस ऑफ ट्वेंटी फोर मेंबर कंट्रीज ऑफ द यू एन इलेक्टेड बाई द यू एन इकोनॉमिक एंड सोशल काउंसिल दट ट्रू ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ इक्विटेबल जोग्राफिकल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन या सम कॉन्टिनेंट्स के सम सम सीट्स लाइक दैट दे आर गिविंग through a secret ballot system that is true it's it's through which india has contested and india has won okay and it's good number of votes india has got because un economic and social council has got some 54 something members out of that 54 members la 46 members voted in support of india that's a grand success for india anyway so that's why this one is in news uh, statistics census is going to come up you know once this election gets over and all those things Anyway, both the statement are correct, so answer is both one and two. Let's go for the next uh, question. Consider the following statements with regard to the UN Security Council's Counter Terrorism Committee. This was also in news because because its meeting was conducted in India recently. Okay, that's why it is very important. And India is a victim of terrorism for very long, so naturally, you guys are expected to. keep uh, it's it's one of the top priority area for the prelims for india uh, so delhi declaration on countering the use of new and emerging technologies for only two statements i guess yeah and then comes both one and two neither one or two only two statements come on quickly delhi declaration on countering the use of new and emerging technologies for terrorist purposes is adopted as a part of the committee special meeting held recently is it true that's true counter terrorism center is assisted by executive directorate cted which carries out its policy decisions and conduct expert assessments of the all the 193 countries of the un member states any country they can make an assessment they can prepare a report about the status and all those things is it true come on second statement quickly d Uh, most of you is putting d that's true both one and two c is correct not neither one nor two both the statements are true okay the cted and this is a very important function and it conducts expert assessments of all the 193 countries uh, they make an assessment okay about their uh, supporting of terrorism or related to that and all those things so both one and two are correct and the next question universal periodic review sometimes seen in the news recently is related to which of the following all the four are here which one is true universal periodic review yeah that is true it is g human right obligations it is actually sri lanka has very recently did this review particularly you guys from tamil nadu you must be knowing it yeah it's a straight driven it's a voluntary process the state has to do a voluntary assessment human rights all state as how it is in their country whether they are sticking to the human right norms sir they are protecting it and all they have to make a good review and they have to submit it okay adu or voluntary process that is done by a country okay universal uh, review it is established by the united nations general assembly in 2006 un general assembly 2006 it's a voluntary uh, peer review process so what are all the steps they have taken to protect their human rights situation in their country and what are all the steps they have taken to fulfill the human right obligations of the un okay un universal declaration of human rights what steps they have taken to fulfill their obligations all those things they have to make and they have to submit a report eh? and uh, three countries helps comes together they call it as troikas to help a country to do this periodic review so three pr countries comes together that's why anyway so answer is d most of you made it right consider the following statements about the interpol interpol also repeatedly in news anyway its head is elected by the un general assembly for a four year term is it true is it true come on un general assembly elects the head of the interpol 
And the term is four years. First statement is correct, actually. Uh, it's why, because I can tell you one reason this is a very important current affair. You know, why interval is important? Because this is the second time in its history. It's a truly global body. 195 member countries are there in Interpol. Even the countries which is non-members of UN also. 193 is UN, 195 is Interpol. This body is whole uh, is conducting uh, its second conference in Delhi. Not second conference. Since its establishment in uh, uh, in 1997, they made their first one of the con India la first conference of Interpol was in 1997. India la second conference is happening of Interpol. Uh, that is why news. It was set up in 1923, and this is 100 years. Interpol is celebrating 100 years, so it is very naturally it is expected. You guys learn about Interpol. Okay, Interpol is celebrating 100 years means, and it is conducting its conference in India means, meeting in India for Delhi for four years, four days they are conducting means. That's why Interpol is very crucial this year. The president of the Interpol is elected by the General Assembly, one of the member states, and he holds for a period of four years. And it has, uh, and it has a full-time secretary general also, and that secretary general is also elected by the General Assembly, but he is for a five-year term. The head on the executive is for four years. Secretary general is also elected by the same General Assembly, but he is for five years. General Assembly lays down the policy for the execution. You and General Assembly puts the policy for the execution. I mean, day-to-day -day functioning, what Interpol has to do. All the executive functions of the Interpol is listed by, uh, provided by the UN General Assembly. Yes, sir. No. Yes, that is also true. General Assembly plays a very crucial role in setting the mandate. Under the red notice of Interpol, a request is made to any UN member nations that if the named individual is located in their country, immediately they should communicate to the country in which that person is wanted. <clears throat> is it true? Nityananda is here only. Do they have to communicate to India? Something like that. I'm asking if it is a member country. Yes, sir. No, it is what red no red notice the purpose is this one. Is it true? That is true. So all the three statements are true. One, two, and three. All the three are correct. You guys made the options D. That is correct. Okay. We'll go for the next question. UN General Assembly policy for execution by the Interpol Secretariat. Interpol Secretariat to the day to day functioning. I mean, what do they perform? All this thing mandated on the UN General Assembly makes and gives it to them. Okay, and time to time they can change it also. Huh? Interpol does not have a separate force. What? Interpol yeah, no, 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 they does not have a separate force. Um, but it has a separate uh, president, not executive, actually. The, the office is called as president. Interpol or president is there. And they have a secretariat also, secretary general. As I said, the Interpol or the structure and functioning, definitely read this year. It was established in 1923, and this is 2023, which means 100 years. No, I told already. Don't uh, miss this Interpol this year. We'll go for the next question. So major event, area, country, ethnic group, etc. in news. Let's see your awareness in this area. Consider the following pairs. How many pairs given below are correctly matched? One pair only, two pairs, all the three pairs, none of the above pairs. Okay. Bakhmut area was in news. It's a stadium in Indonesia in which human clashes. People clashed among themselves resulted in deaths of hundreds of people. Some 200 people got killed or clash or stadium clash. Is it Bakhmut? Is one is right? Huh? Is it the Bakhmut? The next one is Kanjuruhan, an area in the eastern Ukraine under attack by the Russian troops. Is it true? 
Sindh, flood happened due to heavy monsoon rains. Is it true? Sindh province of Pakistan, the flood, the heavy rains. Come on. The like events happened in this year. That's true. Sindh and Baluchistan. These are the two areas. Heavy rain happened. The third statement is true. This one is wrong because it is actually exchanged. It is called as Battle of Bakhmut. The Bakhmut in Rudy, it's one of the strategic area in eastern Ukraine where Russia invaded Russian troops, focused that area and tried to capture that area, capture that area. Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine artillery is not dead. Yeah, because, no, why significant Bakhmut was significant because it's kind of a junction, which means so many roads get divided there. I mean, if you capture that area, you can block entry into various parts. Okay, and the or, or it's like a junction area, a lot of things are there. So, Bakhmut was focused. So, Battle of Bakhmut, they called. It's an area in eastern Ukraine. Russian troops attacked. It was an... And then, Kanjuruhan is a stadium. It's a name of a stadium. You know, 200 around people got killed because it's a football, soccer stadium, football stadium. Two football teams uh, uh, match. Uh, the one team won. Uh, somehow clashes happened between supporters of this team and that team. Strange. Not even two countries. I don't know. But two teams or uh, human clashes. And that's one of the worst event of this year. Which is uh, how many? Nearly 200 plus people. Around 200 people got killed. That's something notable. Crowd management was very bad. Indonesia, it is. It is in Indonesia. Okay, the name of the stadium is Kanjuruhan. So answer is only one pair. Any one of you made it right? Yeah. Only one pair is correct. Yeah, Bakhmut in Ukraine. Very good. That's right. D is incorrect. Yeah. Only one pair is correct. Let's go for the next question. How many pairs given below are correctly matched? The term that was in news, important reason for being in the news, soft landing, a cyclical slowdown in economic growth that avoids recession. Is it true? What's called a soft landing? The term, what does it mean? First is right or wrong. Eating or heating, the term was also very popular last year. Inflation affecting the lives of poorer sections of UK. Hunger, Tonga, Hunga, Hapai. It's a marine underwater volcano in southeast Fiji. Come on. Have you guys heard these terms? Uh, this is true. Uh, you're saying true? That's true. Uh, soft landing. Soft landing is true. Actually, the economy is doing very well. And then it slows down. Slowly it slows down. And then gradually it gets flattened. Okay. It's a cyclical process. Once again, it's a cyclical slowdown. I mean, it's a, it's a theory that says that when an economy grows very well. And then it falls down. It slowly falls down. And it reaches a some point, and then may it, the growth rate will be flattened. There is no improvement, there is no decreasing. This flattened economic status will be there for some years, and then economy will grow again, fall down. This is a theory. And some of the Western countries, I think USA, UK, and all, they are coming under the cyclic soft landing and the concept. They are coming up. The term was in news because the World Inflation Report and all published by which body? An important report, a global report, in a report about the economy. They said that the economy is going to slow down for some countries, inflation and all. I forget that report is very crucial for India's case also. I've kept some question also, I think. Uh, I'll tell you before this class ends, I'll tell you guys. Eating or heating. This term was also very much popular. This true inflation affecting the lives of poorer sections in UK. The winter period, due to inflation and price rise, UK, the people were struggling to spend money because too much winter means they need to 
heat up. They need to spend money to heat their house, homes, all those things. Whether they will spend money for that or they'll spend the money for the food, they were cutting both. Okay, due to the shortage, poorer sections were affected a lot, and eating or heating in return become very much popular. And it was repeatedly it was discussed during throughout the winter period in uh, not just in UK, world over. Hunga Tonga, this one is right. It's it's a place of it's it's the name of a volcano, vol a region. It's the name of that place or something. It's not actually a term that is given, but it is actually a, a name of the region or the volcano. So answer is all the three, all the three pairs. Let's quickly go for the next question. The region Fergana, sometimes seen in the news recently, is associated with which of the following? Tell me A or B, and the next slide, let's see or D is there. It is the protest site in Iran where people mobilized to raise slogan against the moral police of Iran. Yeah, Iran, the people came and protested against moral police, and all you know that. That's one of the bigger event this year. Is it the place for Ghana? That's in Tehran. It's in Iran's capital city, Tehran, not for Ghana. It is the border region divided between Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan, where Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan had conflicts. Is it true? Is it true? As conflict has happened between Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, did war go between conflict happen between the two armies between Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan? That's true. Conflict happened between the two. Two forces could the conflict happen. There is no doubt in it. And the next, it's a landlocked, mountainous, and forested region falling along the Azerbaijan and Armenia border where both the countries are facing conflict. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. And that means this is the option actually. Uh, it's the worst earthquake affected region along the Turkey Syria border. Actually, the Turkey Syria that the entire stretch went for a worst earthquake. It's one of the worst earthquake of the humanity. They say it is sixth uh, biggest or fifth biggest. Huh? It's, yeah, it's it's humanity or the fifth or sixth biggest earth, some bigger earthquake. It's huge loss, no? But there's no such name. Fergana region is not there. It's the entire belt on the went to the under uh, under went to this one. And this region is also under uh, conflict only. Armenian Azerbaijan or border conflict or worst border clash. Both the armies went also. But other uh, the name is what? Caucasus region, not the Fergana. Fergana is this region. Actually, Fergana is a disputed territory uh, between Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. Same ethnic groups. One ethnic group lives there, but all the three are splitting among the three or kind of highly artificial uh, created international border. It is, it is going against the ethnic people living there. But this Fergana is a disputed region that was in news. Answer is B for Bombay. I'll send you the material anyway. Nuclear, military, regional, and security, collective security, etc. All those things in news. Consider the following statements about AUKUS. Most of you would have, can make it right. That's just, anyway, it will be easy for most of you anyway. Uh, three statements. Which of the above is uh, correct? Correct statements. It's a trilateral security partnership for the Indo-Pacific region between Australia, UK, and the US. Is it true? It's a security partnership? True. Uh, the major highlight of this arrangement is the sharing of US nuclear submarine technology to Australia. Very recently, that's also true. It involves cooperation across emerging technologies related to uh, emerging technologies, emerging technologies, and... Uh, related to emerging technologies and also related to undersea capabilities argumentation. Is it true? True, actually. It's it's the only sub outcome is the main goal. Main goal is the cooperation related to emerging technologies, the artificial intelligence, uh, new technology, whatever it is newly emerging, all those matters, the three countries will coordinate and cooperate with each other. 
and under the capabilities they will maximize and all those things so already we have acquired but still they are bringing this akus and all i am bringing uk here once again anglo spear and all is in news all the three pairs 1 2 and 3 so next area reports indexes this is the last area miscellaneous sports areas and all i have kept no question so this is the last area two three questions are there and then session going to over reports indexes including their components and publishing bodies as i told last three years la no questions came from reporter but before that and all regularly questions has come one year three reports coming four reports coming and all is common previously so let's see the questions here two three questions will wind up the session consider the following statements three okay just three statements which is true which is false state of world population report this report is very much relevant this year for india because yeah that's the historic thing we are going to achieve yeah it's published once in a decade by the un population fund is it true first statement is true or false india's population is pegged to reach 142.86 crore against china's 142.57 crore by july 2023 roughly 29 lakhs is it true third india's total fertility rate was estimated at 2 which is lower than the world average the reports regarding this report all this three is true 2.2 two point india it's not two is it not two 2.1 sure i think it is two oh sure guys india's fertility rate i think third statement is true no according to this report it is estimated 2.0 according to the report it is 2.0 2.0 third statement is correct okay this is correct is this correct yes this is correct 29 lakhs will be above them it's published once in a decade by un it's is it published by un population fund come on everybody it's published by un population fund but not in a decade it's published annually though it is published annually <clears throat> this year report and alone made a big news because of this observation for india's case india in the, in the report only in this year is making big news it's not decade it's annual report every year they publish it so answer is 2 and 3 only okay quickly 2 and 3 only which of the following release the world economic situation and prospects 2023 report yeah this report only this is the report i was speaking about previously world level of inflation and economic growth and a very important report this report is the report told who released in the question alone i have kept it but i suggest you go through the basic out basic uh, summary of this report at least or basic five six points that is enough they don't upsc will not dig deeper the report would a basic observations or five or six points in a basic material what you read that alone you go through so un's department of economic and social affairs un desa un ctad you world economic forum imf which one who publishes this report answer us imf <coughs> according to fhs mm, no not according to fhs or something according to this report the question is related to this report okay dimf you guys are putting a somebody is putting who's putting a rudiral alam is putting a and that is akash kumar is putting a a is right actually it is published by united nations department of as i said i suggest you the report or the basic uh, observations uh, just in a half a page 
five six basic observations in a very basic material i suggest you to go through it's actually published by them not by any of them because in the report on the significant india's case a big article was written anyway that's the number of questions i have kept it sample questions it's like a quick revision for you guys yeah okay yeah so if, uh, so every single question is last one year current affair only i did not go beyond and uh, those who have answered that you have checked your status of preparation and all that's okay but those who found it you didn't answer and all this is a time to learn you learned informations yeah that's how you have to take it as i said uh, except one or two questions which is not in the pre stroming questions all the pre stroming international organizations related questions uh, all current affairs related very significant questions i tried to take not any questions from the pre stroming okay which is students are not yet exposed to but still significant international events and i i i try to do that balance uh, and that's how i made these questions so apart from this i would strongly suggest you guys go through the international organizations pre stroming questions i think three tests or two tests has been conducted so 200 or 75 25 current affair or around 150 or maybe 225 questions in pre stroming international organizations are there i would suggest you definitely for this prelims go through it because both the pre stroming tests three tests or two tests la all the questions that has asked from international organizations la 90% question current affair la with upsc standard they asked okay i felt the question paper is very very important i suggest you to go through the pre stroming question papers and the answer keys also so anyway it's a quick revision we had thank you all guys